don't pay attention. Uh, 12 June was uh, World Child Labor, World Day Against Child Labor. It was celebrated, and this morning we're having a conversation on it with Mrs. Esther Ofori Ajiman, who is Principal Labor Officer, Labor Department, Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, okay. I've already started missing the two of you up. Uh, and then Mrs. Charlotte Hansen, Head of Public Affairs Unit, the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations. Welcome, madam. Thank you. It's nice to have the two of you in the studio. Um, well, first of all, the, the, let me start the discussion of first by asking you, because the term is child labor. First, let me start with Mrs. Ajiman. Uh, child. What do you mean when you say child before we even move to the entire term of child labor? Okay, thank you. So, uh, 1992 Constitutional Republic of Ghana defines a child as any person below the ages of 18. So, that is what a child is according to our constitution. Okay. Yeah. And somebody below the age ages of eight. 18, yes, yes. 18. Yes, please. So, if you're 16, you can be engaged in child labor. No, you can't. Okay. So, then explain child labor for me. So, child place. labor is any work that a child engages in that affects his health, his education, and general development. So, that is what child labor is. Health, education. And general development. General development. Yeah. Okay. Health, education, general development. Yeah. But you seem, it seems nowadays you're not only really concerned about just child labor. You're concerned about the worst forms of child labor what's the difference so worst force of child labor is a form of child labor but it's the stream mm -hmm. and we have a uh, forms of uh, some examples of the worst forms of ch child labor as debt bondage okay. we have armed conflict children engaged in armed, co armed conflict mm -hmm. we have children engaged in commercial sexual exploitation which i mean pornography pornography and um um, uh, prostitution. We have forced labor and debt bondage. Mm -hmm. We have children engaged in slave like activities. Uh, recently, we have this organized child beggars on the streets where people organize children to come and beg on the streets. Mm -hmm. That is also a worst form of child labor. So, worst form of child labor is a form of child labor, but it's the stream end. The stream. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, Mrs. Hansen, is that what you're concerned about now? Or just any form of child labor? is a concern for the ministry. Yes, let me just add that. Mm -hmm. Like she rightly said, if you should find any child engaged in any activity that is over and above the child's strength, okay. then that child is into child labor. Let's say, for instance, right as we speak now, there are children who are in class or in school. Mm -hmm. But you also have other children who are into fishing, okay. other children who are into farming. There are other children who are into mining, who are into cracking of stones or what we call the querying, and into other activities which are very exploitative. In any case, we are not saying that children should not work at all. Okay. Children can work. But whatever work that they must be involved in should be light. Mm -hmm. And that is where we come in with the ch uh, light work. So a child, for instance, before he or she goes to school, can probably go and fetch a, just a, bat a bucket of water okay. and then take his bath. Okay. okay. When he closes from school, he can as well assist the guardian or the parent in the house with the house choice, maybe washing of the plates. Okay. But in a situation where the 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 weight of the work that the child is doing becomes a, a how do call it, detrimental okay. to his health affect his health and prevent the child from schooling then it becomes child labor and it is also it also becomes exploitative when for instance you have to traffic the child from one location to one another hour. country just to engage the child into all kinds of uh, vices that is where we have a problem and so we are not saying that children should not work at all. They can do light work. Okay. But where it is more than the child's strength, then we have a problem. And that is where we are going into child labor and its worst forms. Mm. And you mentioned a few 
ones which we should be paying attention to. Yeah. Uh, can you go over that again? Because so we have children engaged in armed conflict, okay. sexual commercial exploitation, like pornography and um, prostitution. Okay. We have slavery and debt bondage. We have children engaged in um, uh, drug trafficking. Mm. We have children engaged in organized begging. So these are the worst forms of child labor that children can be engaged in. And that is what the ministry, as with this mandate of uh, promoting decent work, is uh, progressively working towards eliminating child labor in the country. Mm. Uh, but, but we do see these forms nowadays. Yeah. Because the things you mentioned are serious Sure. activities that even if the child, uh, an adult engages in, you're usually arrested. They are criminal offenses. Yeah. Uh, 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 you see a lot of that. Yeah. Children engage in those kinds. Yes. So l- let me just come in a little. So um, ILO Convention 1973, okay. uh, I think number 183, sets the minimum age for work. Okay. which is 15 years. 15 years. So when a child is 15, that child can do some kind of work okay. and be able to get some small, small money. Okay. okay. But the child cannot be involved in exploitative work okay. or activities unless that child is 18 years and above. For instance, if you have a child going to a farm and is using pesticides or the parent is, in, is using pesticides, you have the situation where the child inhales okay. some of these toxins into the system and it has the potential to affect the health of that child either short term or long term mm-hmm. you understand and we believe that even when you go into the scriptures mm-hmm. some 127 verse 3 it says that children are in heritage of god and even our fathers so the future generation we are talking about are our children. The children of today is the leaders of tomorrow. So as a country, if we don't take good care of our children, then we may find ourselves in trouble in the near future. So all we are saying is that, yes, children can do some work, but under supervision. That is for the eight, uh, it's hard to call it, 15 years. Between 13 to 17 years, they, can they do can't do light work, okay. but it is beyond 18 years that they can do, they, they can go work. into those kinds of hazard, hazard, uh, hazard uh, activities. Okay, uh, because if you're just listening to us, we are having a conversation of uh, ch- on child labor <coughs> and its worst forms. I have in the studio with Mrs. Esther Euphoria Jiman, who is principal labor officer, labor department at the Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations from the same ministry. Uh, Mrs. Charlotte Hansen, head of public affairs unit, joining. Uh, so I, I want to find out because a lot of people, there are some people who might be listening to you who, when you start talking, will say, ah, This is my child. Mm-hmm. I decide what the child will do. So the basic question is, does does your consider the rights matter of rights the rights of the child is that why all this is a huge concern that the child has some rights even if you are the mother and the father there are issues of rights okay thank you so first the child is a property of the state okay whether the child belongs to the father or the mother or any guardian the child is a property of the state and therefore it the onus lies on the state to protect children mm-hmm. and the parents have the responsibility as well to also protect children mm-hmm. and so in as much as you give birth to that child you cannot say that you want to use the child in child labor because you have a responsibility or you have rights over the child mm-hmm. children have rights as well mm-hmm. and some of the basic rights children have they have rights to education they have rights to health they have rights to family life they have rights to play and recreation they have rights to be protected from harm and abuse and that is what we are talking about which is child labor and so in as much as children have rights and their rights sometimes are being uh, uh, curtailed by parents parents should understand that rights come with responsibilities mm-hmm. and so therefore when the children have rights it's the responsibilities that the children also have to do is to make sure that they learn in school and so a parent cannot say that because I gave birth to a child, therefore I can use the child. The child is also a property of the state. Okay. And the state has some rights or some privileges to be able to protect the child from any harm mm. as well. Yeah. Mrs. Hansen. Yes. So just to add to what my, my colleague has said, ILO is of the view that child labor is a violation 
of okay. the fundamental rights of the child. Okay. It is a no, 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 no. So the fact that you have brought children into this world does not give you the license mm. to use your children for child labor. Gone were the days where parents will say that we are bringing for children to assist us in the farms. Believe you me, today this idea is gradually doing what? Changing. Okay. Why? Because we know that one of the root causes of child labor is poverty. Mm. It's extreme poverty. So if you come from a lineage, mm. okay, where you have poverty, you have the whole uh, family members, uh, excuse my language, into fa- I'm not saying that family is, is, is bad, because our fathers, of course, mm. survived on farming before oh, taking care of Mura. But where today we education seems to be the highest form of investment into a child for that child to become a president a lawyer a teacher a journalist a minister like myself okay if you don't invest into that child today and you still want to use that child on the farm where he should be in school then that's where you are violating the rights of the child. You prevent or hinder the child from progressing, from developing his or her full potential in life. Mm. And, and I, want, I want us to go back to the matter of the rights of the child. Exactly. If there's a parent listening mm. right now, which rights does the child enjoy in Ghana that they have to always pay attention to? So one, one of the main rights a child enjoys in Ghana is the right to health. The right to health. Mm. Yes the right to access quality health, okay. the right to education, okay. and the right to family life. So the education is not a choice. No, the no, child no. child needs to Yes, it's school. a right okay. of the child, yes. And when you are talking about rights, rights are legal, social, and emotional uh, potential that the child needs to, entitlement that the child needs to get. Okay. And so when the child has that right, it's an entitlement that the child is having. Mm. And so nobody has to take those basic rights from the child. A child, a right to education, it's a, as we are said, it's an entitlement to the child. Mm. And we are saying that children need to go to school, they need to access quality education, they need to access quality health, they need to have the right to family life, a right to play and recreation. They need, as Auntie Charlotte said, they need to out, outgrow in that environment where they feel the socialization process, where they feel their family involved, where they feel they are learning in the society, where they are protected, they feel belonged. So that is what we are preaching this morning. That do children have rights? Yes, they also have responsibilities. And a child needs to be heard as well. Okay. That is our point this morning. Miss mm. Hansen. Mm-hmm. Anything to add? Yes, just, just to add that the fact that you are a parent mm-hmm. does not give you the license to abuse your child or to sell out your child into, uh, how do you call it, uh, trafficking, mm-hmm. uh, into mm-hmm. any exploitation of prostitution mm-hmm. or what have you. In fact, you have an owner's responsibility to make sure that that child is brought up. In any case, even if you don't have the means, as we speak, there are a lot of interventions and programs that government has put in place mm. to be able to assist parents or guardians. Okay. We have the capitation grant, the school feeding uh, program is there. We also have um, the free SHS. The free SHS. Mm. We the have the free LEAP, Livelihood mm. Empowerment Against Poverty. We have the F Cube, the Free Composure Universal Basic Education. We have the Free HHS, as she said. We have school feeding programs. We have the National Strategy on Social Protection, where government has put in place social protection mm. uh, 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 programs in place to support parents who are in need to be able to live in a society and take care of their well-being. So these are some of the social protection processes in place that government has put in place to be able to complement the efforts of parents in the society. And, For and, the sake, okay. and believe you, with this free SHS program, we can say that a lot of children have been moved okay. out of their homes into the classroom. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, we have... We have we have made a lot of progress okay. as far as child labor is concerned in this country. Well, for the sake of emphasis, um, because anytime you talk about child labor, people are thinking about a child carrying cocoa sacks, among others, people are thinking about, oh, your child cannot do basic jobs. Uh, is that what you're suggesting? That if, for example, I'm into, I sell sachet water, that's what I use to take care of the family, that... I cannot have my child help me in that. 
Is that a suggestion? No, that, I think that that is not what we are saying. We indicated earlier on that the child can engage in light work. Okay. Like you are saying, should it happen that I have a provision shop and the child is seated in the shop, mm -hmm. not at the time of school hours. Okay. So but first, the child has to enjoy those rights. Exactly. Yeah. Schooling. Exactly. Okay. Health. And you can. Okay. So it means that you can you, you can give him work to do when he is sick, he or she is sick. No. Because no. it will violate their right to health. Exactly. Okay. So, like I was saying, if you have a provision shop, mm -hmm. and the child is seated, or is supporting you to sell probably ice water mm -hmm. in that provision shop, which is not close to the streets, mm -hmm. okay. You can't say that one is child labor. And in any case, that one has to also happen after school. All right? So once it happens after school, the child has closed, say, about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and you have a shop, and your child is assisting you. That cannot be called or that be referred to as child labor. Okay, so adding up to what she said, talking in terms of children carrying cocoa sacks and all that and all that. So the country currently has developed an hazardous activity framework on child labor, which is called the HALF. Okay. And the HALF in the stipulates activities which children can do and cannot do. Okay. So they are, they, it's a basic streamline between activities that we consider as hazardous for children and activities that we consider as non-hazardous for children. Okay. And so we have weights, we have measurements in there that a child can carry a sack of cocoa, okay. but it should be something with, that is within his weight and his height. Okay. It shouldn't be something above his weight and his height. For instance, you can give a child a, a bucket of, uh, let's say, I don't know, the paint rubber mm -hmm. to carry. I can give my child about 10 years to carry it for just a short distance okay. to probably go and put it down for me. But when you give the child a bucket of water, 34, year, 34 buckets of water to a child of 8 years to carry, let's say, from one about 10 kilometers the weight of the of the bucket the water in the bucket compared to his his body weight okay. is just not comparable to to that and so we are seeing that in the hazardous activity framework which ghana has developed according to ilo standards we are saying that in the the activities that children can can do and the activities that children cannot do and activities children cannot do are non-hazardous activities and activities children cannot do can do and non hazardous the activities children can do are hazardous activities. So the hazardous activity for us is very clear on what children can do mm -hmm. and what children cannot do. And it depends on the height and weight to which a child can carry a cocoa sack and can and that cannot affect the child. That is what we are talking about. Uh, I think Mrs. Nancy and, puts and it nicely where it says uh, uh, according to their strength. Yeah. Yes, and exactly. also um, in terms of the light work, mm -hmm. when the child assists the parent to sell or assist the parent probably to fetch a bucket of water or to do uh, some few washing of his or her own clothing. Those ones mm -hmm. are light work because the child is only al uh, being learn. allowed to learn, okay, to learn our cultural practices, learn to grow in society and also become a responsible parent. But where the work is above the strength of the child, for instance, you give the child the whole family's clothing, to wash that one becomes child labor hmm. and that is what so in simple that, terms you are saying that the mm -hmm. accounts have an adage which says that okay. and so basically in simple terms we want to explain child labor that a child growing up Engwa is a snail a chichidia is a tortoise mm -hmm. it is easy for a child to break the back of a snail and even me and you as adults, it will be very difficult for us to break the back of a tortoise. Okay. And so we are saying that children who can break the back of snails are children who are literally learning, going through a learning process. Such the, the work that they do, it's a learning process for them, it's a socialization process for them. But the work in which they engage, that they cannot break the back of a tortoise, are the hazardous activities work that we are saying that children should not be engaged in. And that is what we call child labor. Mm -hmm. Well, let, let's move on to the discussion of this year's celebration of the World Day Against Child Labor. Yeah. Uh, you, you did it over the weekend? Yes. Uh, the theme, as I announced earlier, is universal social protection to end child, child labor. labor. What does that mean? So, um, we domesticated the universal social protection to end child labor is the universal theme. Okay. But we domesticated it into the Ghanaian theme and okay. it's read together, let's end child labor through social protection. Together, and let's end, end child, child labor, labor through social protection. Okay. 
And when we say social protection, social protection is basically the prevention, the managing and overcoming some uh, adverse situations God. to ensure that child, uh, people live in a society uh, and become free. Okay. So this is basically what social protection is. The world of when uh, people assess, they, they are, we are able to manage, are able to prevent and overcome some situations, mm -hmm. and they make their world being very okay for them, comfortable to live in the society. That is what we are, we say social protection is. And so, uh, as Auntie Charlotte had already indicated, governments have put a lot of social protection processes or programs in place, which I'd already mentioned. We talked about the free SHS, the school feeding, the capitation grants, the LEAP, the Earth Cube, and many others. And so, through the social protection, we are calling on uh, civil society organizations, we are calling on the media, mm -hmm. we are calling on traditional authorities, we are calling on parents, we are calling on government institutions, uh, faith-based uh, organizations, we are calling on NGOs mm -hmm. to be able to come together and complement government efforts to be able to support uh, deprived parents who want to take care of their children. Okay. And so th we are calling on uh, partners to help government to support these social protection safety net programs, to be able to let parents who are very deprived in deprived community and cannot take care of their children, to be able to have access to these pro uh, programs and then be free and be able to take care of their children. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 Mrs. Hansen, is that a call for investment? Yes, it's a call for action. A call for action. Yes, yeah. it's a call for action. It's, it's a collaborative effort. We, mm -hmm. we need to build the synergies. Mm -hmm. We need to come together. And we are saying universal because mm -hmm. we believe that, or ILO believes that no individual person, mm -hmm. no one partner. Mm -hmm. So it is a global mm -hmm. something. All hands must be on deck, like he rightly mentioned. Every one of us must get involved. Media, teachers, even the children themselves, okay, every one of us must get involved so that together we can eliminate. Please, let's not forget that I think uh, according to the Sustainable Development Goals, target 8.7, by 2025, mm -hmm. we should be able to end child labor. But this is where we are. So it looks like we need to accelerate all the measures. Yeah. And strategies we so the plan is that in three years, yes, yes. and then child labor by 2030, end all forms of slavery, yes, and yeah. bondage, yes. Oh, okay. And your theme for this year <laughs> is that you find that the fastest way to do that will be yes. through social protection. Yes. Social yeah. protection, do we have the investments we need? Okay, so in talking of investments, investments cannot be enough, okay. And one of the main investments we need now, as Auntie Charlotte, is the call for action. Okay. And the action translates into financial investments. Okay. You see, government is doing its bit in every way to ensure that child labor is eliminated from our country. Mm -hmm. And child labor is a very critical, it's a diverse issue that we need to culturally place it in our cultural context mm -hmm. to be able to understand it better. Mm -hmm. We've heard people who say that, oh, this is work we've done in the past and it didn't affect us. This is work we've all done when we were children and it didn't do anything to us. But it's a gradual process. Mm -hmm. The fact that you didn't experience it at that time, probably considering it now, you might be going through a lot of challenges now in terms of your health which but probably it is due to the work that you engage in probably some time back. That was how come you did. So calling on uh, financial investments, we are saying that we are talking about schools, we are talking about health facilities, we are talking about water problems in our communities and societies. Because even when water is uh, in, in, in a, in, it's not in a society, it can, uh, children need to trek a longer distance to be able to get water to come and back to school. Mm -hmm. And in trekking those long distances, they carry heavy loads of back, uh, water to be able to come back home. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, communities and uh, uh, districts have access to portable water, they have school uh, facilities, they are health facilities around. These are practical things that we are calling that we invest money into it. Okay. These are practical things that when we do, children can go back to school. Children can have access to and clean water. And you're looking beyond government. So you want civil society to be engaged. It is a call, it is a call for action. We are calling on pastors, imams, religious bodies, traditional authorities, the media, the parents. We are calling on everybody. 
Child labor is a national problem. Okay. It's a global problem. Yeah. It's, it's a, a national problem, problem, and it is not less for only governments to do it. We are calling on companies. They should exercise their corporate social responsibilities in the communities within which they work. Okay. They should exercise their uh, social, corporate social responsibility to be able to support community members, to be able to achieve such basic amenities in their societies. And so it's a call for action for everybody involved to be able to eliminate child labor in Ghana. Mm. Well, we, we have to bring this to a close, but before you go, it just like, because when you mentioned 2025, I was a little stunned. <laughs> <laughs> the three years, that's the plan. Yeah. Is that possible? It is so possible. <laughs> In three years. Whatever you put your mind to, it is achievable. Because it is possible. You, you look on our streets and that tells a different story. You were just talking about organized... Uh, Begging. Yes. So yeah. you look on our streets, you're looking at the hawk, hawk children involved involve in hawking, you talk about the loot that is co- uh, that is commensurate with their strength. Yeah. You don't see that really. So, three years, can that be done? And how can we get it done? Yes. So, as we rightly said, it is a concerted effort that we all need to, okay. to come on board. Mm-hmm. And it is, it is an issue where we need to conscientize our minds that it is possible for it to happen. And once that action, that mindset is placed... We all need to come together and rally behind a common goal. We have a national plan of action where we are calling on all members to rally behind that national plan of action. Because when efforts are done in bits, NGOs are doing their efforts separately, civil societies are doing efforts separately, the media is doing its efforts separately, the efforts become in bits and we cannot coordinate it to represent a national picture. Therefore, we are calling on traditional authorities, we are calling on civil society organizations. I keep coming on that because governments cannot do it alone. It's a collective effort. It's a national effort. Child labor has an implication on our national development. And once we come together to be able to eliminate child labor, it is so possible and we can achieve ch- elimination of child labor by 2025 according to the SDG goal 8.7. Yes, and I'm also asking because in order to achieve this, you have to have police involvement ensuring that the legalities are dealt yeah. with. How well are the stakeholders collaborating? So, working to ensure so, that this so like he, she rightly said mm. there is a national plan of action mm. we completed the phase one this phase two also expired last year i think december in december yeah. you're always successful so, with both phases. yes we have made a lot of achievement okay. and as part of the national plan of action one of the strategies that we needed to put in place was to develop protocols and guidelines towards the implementation of child labor free zones. Okay. That document has been launched. We have tested or we have piloted that document, uh, I think, l- this year. Yeah. Early this year, that document was piloted and supported by JICA. Mm-hmm. And we, we have been able to come out with some findings. We realized that some of the indicators were just too ambitious. We have reviewed it. And very soon, we are going to print another copy. And what we are saying is that the police is involved, the uh, Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection is involved, the Social Welfare Department is involved, uh, Ministry of Employment, Labor Department, the Child Labor Unit, SRAJ. Everybody is getting on board. And once we have this document also in place, it really also p- supposes that any other partner okay. that wants to... Um, put some kind of resources or funding mm-hmm. into any of the uh, uh, areas, like uh, be it a cocoa sector, the fishing, the mining sector, wherever you want to uh, have an intervention. We are looking at it being done in a holistic way. Okay. Okay. Well integrated way, consistently, mm-hmm. to be able to make impact. We don't want, and we are calling, uh, one of the indicators is that we want to go about it in a, a in integrated area based approach okay. so that as a, a partner once you get into any locality make sure that you you handle all the child labor issues that are within the space let's take for instance you go into the farming area mm-hmm. make sure that you you are able to uh, move children who are into mining who are into uh, uh, quarry, who are into fishing, within that same locality. It's an integrated area-based approach. We are going about that so that 
we don't want the situation where when you move a child from mining, by the time you realize you move into, into agri okay. and then move into a, another sector. So we are calling on all and sundry, mm. local 